the node class is very simple. It will hold three members for now. Those are the name of the node, so we have something to display in the tree view. Then we have the children of the node, which is an empty list for now. And then we also have the parent of the node, which is the parent argument passed to us. We will also add ourselves into the child list of the parent node. Like so. If parent is not none, parent add child self. The add child method is not implemented yet. So let's implement it. Add child self child. So we pass a child to it. And then we just called append method of the list with the given child. So this adds the given child into the children list. We will come back and change most of the functions to throw exceptions when the type is not a node. Like this one. But for now I'll keep everything simple. We need a few more methods. Let's start with the method that returns the name. This is how it looks like. All it does is return the name. We also need methods to get a child and get the number of children. We, we will pass a row number which we'll use to index the children's array and return the corresponding child and the child count will return the length of the children's list. We need two more methods. A way to get the parent of this node and also the index of this node relative to its parent. To get the parent, all we do is return the parent node. To get the index of this node relative to its parent, all we do is if self has a parent then we return the index that this node corresponds to. So we access the parent node, we access its children list we call the index method of a list, we pass ourselves to it, and this then returns what row this node lies in, the index relative to its parent. Now, our class is pretty much done. This class will represent the data that will be shown by our tree model. Let's create a few nodes now. Let's create a root node called node hips then a child node called left pirate leg with the parent root node then another child node called right leg with the parent again root node and finally another child node called right foot this time the parent is going to be child node 1 which is the right leg all right those are bound together now in a hierarchical fashion, but we have no way of visualizing this. So let's implement a method that helps us with that. This log method will be used to log the hierarchy in the console when we call print on any of the nodes. It will increase the tab level before it recurses any children, and then it will decrease the tab level. So basically in between the increase and the decrease of the tab level we need to recursively call the log function. And the log function needs to return the output text. So for child in self children output is child log with the tab level. So when we call this on the root, it will 
increase the tab level and then it will call child log for every children and then finally it will return the output and this output will also come from the child log methods but before that we actually need to increase the tab count in the output text like so output add a tab to it and then we need to add the name of the current node and then a line break this is basically it so when we call print this function will be called which calls the log method depending on which node we call it will start recursing from that node so if I would call print on the root node when we call when we run this and check the console you see that we have hips as the root tab level 1 with left pirate leg and right pirate leg and then tab level 2 for the right foot let's make this look better let's add this one here and maybe a line break after every tab level decrement run this again invalid syntax whoops and there we go much better so now we actually see that we have implemented a hierarchical data structure successfully now we can go ahead and implement the model itself so we can attach it to a view alright the fun starts now we will implement a model that can be used for a scene graph view in a level editor for a game to implement a tree model we have the subclass qabstract item model and provide methods that we have talked about in the previous tutorials such as row count column count data method to display something on the view header data method to display something on the views header flags method so we can select items or have items enabled so they are not grayed out but tree models and tree views require two more special methods those are index and parent. We will implement the parent method first and then the index method. Once those are covered, the rest will be cake. The constructor is similar to the other models we have implemented. It just receives a root node for the tree model and stores it in a protected member. The parent method receives a QModel index class that reflects an item. Remember that a QModel index class had valuable information about where an item was with the row and column methods that returned integers, which we used to index our lists in the previous tutorials. It also has something called internal pointer. The internal pointer method returns our custom node instance, which we implemented above. So our node is the return value from the internal pointer method which returns a node. Our goal with this method is to return the parent of the given index. And the returned value must be a QModel index class itself. So we have to create one inside the method. So in pseudocode we get the parent, we wrap it up in a QModel index and return it. So first we get the internal pointer which is our node we call our own parent method which returns the parent node this parent method corresponds to this one once that's done we check if the parent node is the root node that the tree model holds by calling this if it is which it will be the first time the tree view calls this method, we return an empty QModel index. 
because roots don't have a parent. But if it's not the root node, it means it's a child. Now is the time to create the QModel index class that we will wrap the parent node into. The factor method that does this is called create index. And it's provided by inheritance. We we'll get it by inheriting QAbstract item model. The first argument is an integer that should correspond to the row that the parent node lies in. So we call our custom row method that we implemented above. Parent node row. So this method corresponds to our own row method that accesses the parent of this node and then gets its index in the children list. The second argument can be zero for now. I'll come back to that later. The final argument is an object that can be anything. It's also the object that will be returned when you call internal pointer of the index this method returns. We will pass our parent node to this argument. And then finally return it. Goal accomplished. We got our Q model index from the input. We got our parent node. We wrapped it up in a Q model index and returned it. Next is the index method. It receives two integers and a parent. The two integers are row and column, which the view acquires from row count and column count. We haven't implemented those yet. It also receives a parent, which it acquired from the method above, which we implemented a minute ago. The index method is responsible for returning a child at the given row, at the given column, of the given parent. First thing first, we check if the parent is valid. Because if it's the root node, it's not gonna be valid. So we set the parent node to self root node. But if parent is valid, then we get the internal pointer, which again corresponds to our node instance. So we got the parent node now. After that, we get the child by calling our own child method and passing the row that we want the child from. The row is an integer, and this child method is the same method as this one. But if child would be none, for some weird reason, we return an empty queue model index. So if child item pass for now, else return an empty queue model index. If child exists, we create an index and return it. So we use the same method as before, self create index. And we put the row here from the given row. And here we put the column, which is probably going to be zero. And the parent is not going to be used this time. Instead, we're going to use our child item. And again, the last argument will correspond to the same value the internal pointer returns for this newly created index. Finally, we just return this. Done. We took the row. We asked for the child in the parent node. We got the child item. Then we have wrapped it up in a queue model index and returned it. Now what's left is only the easy methods that you already know about. <laughs>